Am I the only one in here? Is there anybody else in here who could say, I know that, the, that this story is true about Jesus because he's changed my life. Is there anybody in here? Look around. It's like the room is the majority. And if you're not a, if you're here today and you're trying to check it out, you could ask any one of us and we can tell you, Jesus Christ is real and he changed our life. Not because I'm a Baptist, not because I'm religious, not because I go to church on Sunday. It's not about denominations and religion. It's about a personal relationship between a person who's a sinner and saved only by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That's it. And I do go to church because I want to worship the one that died for me. Every Sunday is a memorial service, and remember that. So they needed proof, these followers, these apostles, and so do we, an assurance that Jesus arose from death, and their faith, it needed to be certain. And I don't know if you noticed that, I had this little seed of faith growing here, and it's got to grow. It's got to get to the place where in your life you're for sure certain and there's no doubt in your mind and you're willing to take the word of God. That's why it's so important to become a disciple. You need to be a believer in Christ, but a believer in Christ will become a disciple, which is a follower of Christ. And regardless of what life brings, we need faith in order to overcome crises and disappointments and illness and loss and the death of loved ones. How in the world does somebody get through this life without faith? You can't. So Jesus had just given these disciples what seemed to be an impossible task. He commanded them to go to Jerusalem where they lived, to Judea, which was the southern kingdom where they lived, to Samaria, which was the place they really didn't want to go to in the northern kingdom, and to the uttermost part of the world, even heaven, and tell people the good news. And so Jesus... He is the Son of God. He loves us. He died for our sin. He was buried and He's alive today. And in order to tell people the good news, we've got to have sure faith. You've got to know it in your heart that it's true. So for 40 days, Jesus had given them all this proof. Uncontestable, undeniable, absolute evidence that He was not only alive, but He was the Son of God with great power that they could not explain any other way. That's why when they went out in the boat and they'd been fishing all night and they came in and he says, you need to go out and cast out on the other side of the boat. And they cast out, remember, and the net was filled, overflowing. They knew it's the Son of God. It's the Lord who stands on the shore and commands us to cast the net on the other side. They needed to know. They had to be convinced. And that's the same with us. We're no different. So Jesus had revealed himself to women at the tomb. He revealed himself to the disciples. He re re revealed himself to a couple of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And over 500 people personally saw, touched, ate with, and heard Jesus Christ. And then his own apostles saw him ascend back into heaven. And the two guys in white. Who do you think those were? Angels. They're not baseball players. These were... I mean, I think it's referring to angels because it's talking about... It says two men in white. And there's two men in white. I don't... I think it was angels. It doesn't say angels in my book. In my Bible. But it says two men in white. I'm taking it. Those were angels. And they said, well, why are you looking up in the sky? He's coming back. Somebody... They had to know. And they were there planted white. Just one more time to say he is the son of God and he's coming back. Why was that important? Jesus could have said that, but instead these two guys dressed in white are standing there and they say he's coming back. Why was that important to them? He promised he would. They needed just one more assurance. They also needed some accountability. And I think it gives you and me accountability to know someday he's coming back. Are you ready? He's coming back. And so, <laughs> it's important to demonstrate a changed life. Now, if you're going to be a witness for Jesus Christ, you cannot just continue living the way you used to be. Because if you live the way you used to, 
people won't see any change and they won't believe that there's any difference and why would they believe in Jesus if he doesn't change your life? What's that? That's one. And so we have to jump, demonstrate a changed life and one of the ways we demonstrate a changed life, perhaps the most important one, is the, is the uh, agape love, unconditional love that God puts in our heart. That's why love is so important. It's not a romantic, gushy feeling. It's a change that God works in your heart so that you become like Him. It's a, the love is about becoming like Him. It's about putting, other people, putting God first before yourself. It's about putting other people before yourself. The love is about desiring what's best for other people without consideration for yourself. That is evidence that you're born again. That's evidence that you're changed because that's not the way of the world. The way of the world doesn't say, oh, I'll, I'll give that up so I can be nice to you. Are you kidding? That's not the world. The world says, I'm in it for Ichiban, for me. I'm in it for me, number one. And if I have to run over you and you're in my way, I will do it. That's the world. And the dramatic change that happens when you're born again is you have God's agape, unconditional love, which desires the best for someone else without consideration for yourself. It is an essential element of our faith. Absolutely essential. It enables you to, be, to, to, to live out a changed life that bears witness to the truth of your testimony.